Manchester United win their first game of the Premier League campaign, but it wasn't all smooth sailing. A 1-0 win with clear deficiencies and the United Twins are going to speak about that right now. <sighs> Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. It has been a minute, mm -hmm. a hot minute since we've been here. Hope everybody's had a great summer and what's left of it as well. The weather's been kind of up and down. You know, we haven't quite received that heat wave of last year, 2022, when it almost hit 40 degrees. <clears throat> it's been a bit up and down, hot, cold, hot, cold, sun, no sun. I need some sun, man. It's good for the melanino. But anyway, let's talk ball. Manchester United, they won against Wolves at Old Trafford. That's okay. But I wasn't convinced at all. To be fair, I was a little concerned coming off the preseason. But I gave the team somewhat of a pass because the main aim, at least, is to regain fitness. What do you think about that in the comments? Potentially yes, no. What did you think of the overall preseason? What I was looking for this season now is for us to become a better side when it comes to retaining possession of the ball. Often against Wolves, we attempted to quickly build up play but it would always break down. What made it worse was the fact that high up the pitch, we had numbers committed. So our opponents looked absolutely devastating in transition. Walking through the midfield like they weren't even there and that's something that Eric Ten Hag will have to sort out sooner rather than later. No doubt about it. We were extremely lucky that Wolverhampton in our season scored the least number of goals in the Premier League. And you can see why. They just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. At all. And we were supplied with a full litre bottle of mercy juice today because the way our goal got peppered. I was shocked with the amount of times they were able to enter our area in the second half as we held onto that one goal cushion courtesy of Rafael Varane. I do think however that it is the first game of the season. They will get better as time progresses. I hope. I would be lying if I said there aren't any concerns because I'm scarred by this club. All the years of shame and pain will do that to you. Fact. Hey, one day we will all be cured. Hopefully when the glazers are gone, but even that situation looks like it might be in jeopardy. <sighs> On a positive note. I can't wait to see Rasmus Hoyland come in because I still think we're missing that focal point. And it's a shame that we haven't brought in another natural nine because Rashford through the middle doesn't do it for me. He just doesn't. And if you still have faith in Anthony Martial, I am praying for you, sir and ma'am. I am praying for you. Don't get me wrong. I would love it. I would love it. I'm not expecting it anymore. Well, this Harry Maguire situation has turned out to be quite a mess for all parties, or maybe it's not. <laughs> Just to give you all the updates, Manchester United and West Ham agreed to a £30 million deal for the English centre-back, subject to personal terms being sorted out. And I always found that fishy, for the simple reason that in most deals, personal terms are the first thing to be agreed these days. Now, that is my observation. Let me know in the comments if you disagree or, or if that's incorrect. But that has been has been my observation over the past few months, years, or you know, just in general. So we're waiting and waiting, and eventually we get the news that he is seeking severance payments from Manchester United because West Ham won't do it. Why should they? To make up for the drop in his wages, and I believe the amount quoted was around seven million. Obviously, this leaves West Ham waiting even longer into the Premier League season. It has already started last weekend. So now they're off looking at other options while Eric Ten Hag seems contempt in keeping Maguire and allowing him to fight for his space in the team. What do you think about the whole situation, Cappy? And let us know in the comments as well. It's a bit of a mess. And we're not people who try to create or hold on to agendas nah. in this massive social media world of fandom. 
it can be funny at times but when it's personal and it's targeted and all that stuff there's no place for it and i think i can speak for cm when i say that as well so harry Maguire last season fell out of favor and in my opinion i don't think he was a second or third backup option in the center back position that off the top of the dome was probably Victor Lindelof and Luke Shaw who emerged as a really versatile option in that back line for Eric Ten Hag. This summer, Maguire was relieved of his captaincy duties and that's me saying it in the nicest possible way. So if there was any time to look around the room, analyse and realise that a new start would be the best possible solution for both parties, it would have been now. I am always somebody, however, CM, that would love to be proved wrong. And I think looking at you guys across who are looking at me and CM on the screen, you probably like that as well intrinsically because it benefits us when a player we don't think is good enough for the club proves us wrong. Simply, it's great. But it just doesn't seem like there's a pathway for him to get the desired game time and that should be a concern on the player's side. A lot of people have mentioned him being an England international and an important cog in the wheel of Gareth Southgate's defence. That's one thing, but I'm worried about the players at Manchester United and how motivated and driven they actually are to compete for places. It's got to be healthy competition and I just don't see how this whole debacle from inside and out can return to being healthy competition on the field of play. This still falling through may also affect Manchester United's pursuit of a new centre-back, which looked to be by Munich's Benjamin Pavard, but due to FFP restrictions, according to reports, that won't happen because we have to offload Harry Maguire. It's the same issue that is probably plaguing that Sofiane Amnabat deal right now. Because look how many weeks this has been close, but all of a sudden... It's not, not it's not happening or Liverpool are going in as a target, maybe to speed up the deal, who knows? But we haven't been able to offload Donny van der Beek. We haven't been able to offload Harry Maguire. We're struggling to offload Eric Bailly. We got rid of Fred the other day, that's good. We got rid of Anthony Alanga, so we have sold some players, but we need to do more. Dean Henderson looks like he's staying at the club. After earlier in the, in the summer, looking like he was going to... Nottingham Forest and who's the other one there's another guy um but Scott, Scott McTominay, McTominay looks like he's staying at the club as well that's the one I was thinking of so it seems like the season has started and we're getting closer and closer to that end game point where you need to bring in those players and embed them as soon as possible but we're struggling to get across that finish line the final thing we didn't mention from the Wolves game involves that Andre Onana incident in the box that probably should have resulted in a penalty late on. Yeah. Gary O'Neill wasn't happy about it after Simon Hooper basically told him that the collision should have been a spot kick and the aftermath was seeing the entire officiating team all drop from this weekend's set of matches. See, I mean, it hasn't been a great start to the season already when it comes to refereeing decisions everybody in the comments as well what would it take for things to be what's the what's the way to deliver this what would it take for things to be more straightforward in terms of the decision making for referees the rules var everything involved what would it take for decisions to be more straightforward because i am happy with the victory but it only takes something like that to happen against Manchester United for complaints to start spewing in left, right and centre. And that goes for every single fan base, every single team in the Premier League, in Europe, in world football. So what would it take for these decisions to become more straightforward, for referees to make less mistakes, for VAR to kind of assist referees, which I thought was the job in the first place, but it seems like it's not doing a great job in assisting referees and helping them make that correct decision in game time. For some reason, there's always been hesitation with VAR 
or those working in VAR, Stockley Park, whatever you want to call it, pulling up referees in certain scenarios when they really need the assistance. I've never understood this clear and obvious error thing because it just seems like a cover up to me. It's either an error or not, but that's how I think anyway. That's how I perceive it. And I just find it strange that we need more help and technology at your disposal. Decision making has seemed to deteriorate and that could be due to a multitude of reasons. But overall, football is a simple game and it's being overly complicated with different terminologies that quite frankly make little to no sense contextually blessings to all the 22s in the comment section below let us know what you think about all of the talking points start a conversation there and we'll be close by but for now please be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoy subscribe if you're new share to your friends and frenemies and until the next time, we'll see you lot sooner. Ooh.